So I talk in The Secret History of the American Empire. It's divided into five sections. Uh, four of those sections re regard uh, four of the major areas of influence in the world today, Latin America, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, and talk about the problems in each of those areas, which are quite different in the different areas, the opportunities in each which are different, but come down to point out that in the end, we're, they're all coming together. We're really understanding that we're one world in this process. And the fifth section of the secret history then deals with how, as we come together, we must move into changing that process, what we each can do, what you and I each can do to make this happen. And I'm not, I don't have time tonight to go into all the four areas, so I'd like to talk primarily about Latin America uh, tonight and then move into what we each can do. But Latin America today is the leader in the revolution. Um, Marlboro College will be the leader here, but Latin America has taken an incredible leadership. In the last four or five years, nine countries in Latin America have voted in the president who said no more exploitation by foreign corporations. These presidents have said the profits from Ecuador's oil must benefit Ecuador's poorest people. The profits from Bolivia's gas must benefit Bolivia's poorest people. The most recent of those elections was just last week in Paraguay. Paraguay, been run by Strasner, an, an, an ex-Nazi. For years, it was a neo-colonialism stronghold, and it just, the, the election there was just won by a man who's known as the Bishop of the Poor. He was a Catholic bishop, had to drop out of that in order to run for politics, but he was the Bishop of the Poor. And we've seen now, these countries represent more than 80% of the people of South America. And they have gone through a democratic process, every one of them, peaceful, and voted in these amazing men and two women in Chile and Argentina who have promised to help the poorest of the poor to use local resources to do this. They've said, we do not want foreign aid. We don't need help. We have the resources. We just need to have the right to use those resources for our people. No more exploitation by foreign corporations. And I also want to say that during most of my lifetime, every one of these countries was run by a brutal dictator, a Washington puppet. Not anymore. That's all changed in this millennium. That's all changed in the last few years. And one of the reasons it's changed is because very diverse groups have come together to recognize that they have one common interest, and that is to create an environmentally sustainable, socially just, and peaceful world for themselves and their offspring in each one of these countries. For example, throughout history, the indigenous people in the military since the time of the conquest have been pretty much at war with each other in one way or another. In Ecuador, in Bolivia, in Nicaragua, in Venezuela, and throughout the hemisphere, these two groups have come together. And they brought in the candidate who's promised to do something better. And in each time, this candidate has been up against an opposition who was supported by Washington. And in each time, the opposition candidate, the candidate, the people's candidate, the anti-exploitation candidate has won. And I think this tells us something magnificent about this world we live in. If these diverse groups in Latin America that have been at each other's heads for so long can come together, then Sunnis and Shiites and Israelis can also come together to serve the best common interests of the Middle East. And the various diverse groups in the United States and in India and in China and Tibet can come together. We must see to it that that happens. And the leadership is being shown. A model has been developed in Latin America.